Thank you. Uh, so my name is Johan Berg, uh, and this is uh, the second time I attend this meetup. And uh, I got inspired by the talks from last time and uh, decided to submit my own talk. So I will be talking about a C23 feature called explicit object parameter. Uh, or you may have heard, heard it by the name deducing this. Uh, so I'm going to show you what this feature is, how it works, uh, how it can be used to simplify some code, and a couple of new things that wasn't possible before this feature. So we'll start with uh, a simple non-static member function. Uh, so the function f here takes no parameters. But uh, as you probably know, it actually has this hidden first parameter, an implicit object parameter. And we can access it through the this pointer inside the function body. Uh, this new feature gives us a way to make this parameter explicit and to be able to give it a name. And here's what that looks like. Um, so we prefix the first parameter with the this keyword, followed by the name of the class, which is x in this case, and give it a name. Um, I've chosen the name self here by convention. It's what's used by other programming languages such as Python and Rust. And uh, as you can see, we're taking self by reference here. But we could have taken it by const reference or R value reference, uh, for example. And we can also overload the function f based on that. So we could have one overload for when the object that we call f on is an L value and another overload form when the object is an R value, uh, and so on. Uh, but this is, that's not something new. It's, it's, um, it was introduced in C++11 by a feature called ref qualifiers. Uh, so this is valid C++11 code. Um, and the references at the end of the function declaration here they apply to the implicit object parameter. So uh, the first overload will be called if the object is an L value, and the second for const L values, and then R values and const R values. Uh, and here's the same thing using an explicit object parameter. Uh, so these two are basically the same, just a different syntax. But Maybe we don't want to write all of these overloads. So instead, we could make the function f a function template. So here we have a template parameter self, which is an explicit object parameter, as we can see by the this keyword. And we're using a forwarding reference here. So the type of self, it would be deduced from the object that we call f on. So we could say that we're deducing the type of this, or deducing this. And so this is where that name comes from. Um, and this um, follows the standard C++ rules for template argument deduction. So here we have a base class with a function f in it, and a class that derives from base. Uh, and inside the main function here, we create an object of type base. And when we call the function f on that object, uh, self will be deduced to reference to base. And if we move the object and call f, self will be deduced to just base. And the more interesting case is when we have an object of type derived. Uh, if you remember, the, the function f here is a it's a function template, and, and the, the template parameter will be deduced from the object that we call f on. So in this case, uh, because the object is of type derived, uh, self will be deduced to reference to derived, even though the function is declared inside the base class. So, uh, so how can we use this feature to simplify some code? 
Um, maybe it's not that common to write overloads for all those ref qualifiers that we saw earlier, but a more common case is to have both a const version and a non-const version of a function. So here we have a function value that returns a member of some type t, and we have one version that returns a mutable reference and another version that returns a const reference. And uh, this is a very simple example, but uh, there's a little bit of code duplication here uh, that we like to remove. And we can do that by uh, making the function value here a function template and deducing the type of this as we saw. I've also added a return type deduction here to let the compiler figure out the type of the return value. <clears throat> um, so if we call this function on a mutable object, we will get a mutable reference. And if we call this function on a const object, we will get a const reference. Uh, so now we have a single function that does the same thing as the two functions on the slide before. Uh, to make this complete, we could also add forwarding here. So now this will also handle R values, R value reference correctly. So if we call this function on an R value object, we will call move on the return value. We can also use this feature to simplify CRTP. Um, if you don't know what CRTP is, it's uh, the curiously recurring template pattern. And it's where you have a derived class uh, that is passing itself as the template argument to its own base class. Uh, so here we have a template class base. And as you can see, the derived class is passing itself as the template argument to the base class. And by doing that, we can access the derived type inside the, a function in the base class. So if we look at the function work here, we can uh, static cast this to the derived type. And we can call a function on the derived type. So here we call the function do work on the derived class. Uh, so by using, deducing this, we can simplify this. As you can see, uh, the base class is no longer a template class. And if you remember, uh, when we call the work function here in, in the base class, when we call this on a derived type, self will be deduced to the derived type. So we don't need a cast anymore inside the work function. We can just call self do work, and it will call uh, the derived um, the function in the derived class, uh, in the derived class prism. Uh, so it will just work. And here's something that wasn't possible before. Uh, we can pass an explicit object parameter to a lambda. And by doing that, we can access the, the closure object of the lambda, and we're able to call the function operator on it. So here's an implementation of factorial. And as you can see, we're calling self inside of the lambda body here. So we get a recursive lambda. Another new thing is we can pass this by value. So if we have an empty type like a stateless lambda or a cheaply copied type like the class year here that just wraps an integer, um, there's no reason that we should have to store the object on stack and load the address and pass that when we call a function, when we could just pass an integer directly in a, in a register. Uh, or in the case of an empty type, there's really nothing to do. So what do I want you to do? Um, I want you to try this feature out and see what you think about it. If you're on Windows, it's available in Visual Studio 17.2. If you're on GCC or Clang, it's not supported yet. 
So make sure to keep an eye on the compiler support page on CPB Reference. And while you're waiting, you can try it out in uh, Sean Baxter's Circle compiler. Um, so as I said, uh, try this feature out and have some fun. And uh, think about places in your own code where you could use an explicit object parameter. Thank you. <laughs>